Rachel's favorite food is hot, hot dogs. dogs. Problem is, most store-bought hot dogs contain all kinds of nasty ingredients. So today, we're going to show you how to make your own. What's up, family? I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are Two, two Crazy, Crazy Ketos. Ketos. And if you're new to our channel, welcome. Here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things like product reviews and we do recipe videos. We talk about various keto topics and every Monday, we go live on Keto Beyond the Couch. We just kind of talk about what's going on in our lives for the week. You can find us in different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we have a website, which is twocrazyketos.com, and that's where you're going to find all of our different recipes. Now we do upload at least five new videos every single week, so make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon, and that way every single time we find out Rachel may or may not be a cheap date, you'll be alerted to it. I don't think hot dogs are that cheap anymore, though. I've always liked hot dogs. You have. I mean, it's not fancy, but it's the truth. Your favorite thing used to be go to Costco and get a hot dog. That was our date night. Okay, so $1.50 for a drink and the hot dog, I think that is a cheap That's date. That's a cheap date. Today we're going to show you how to make your own. Now, this is a little bit more of a complicated recipe, but Rachel can still make this recipe. You think so? I, You do. You can make this recipe, but you do need some specialized equipment, sort of. So let's go over what you're gonna need. We can put those off to the side. So most of us do have a kitchen at home, especially if you've been making, you know, the uh, Maria Emmerich kind of bread. So right. you, you, if you need a KitchenAid stand mixer, or you need a meat grinder, and you can need a sausage stuffer. <laughs> so this is a sausage stuffer, but you don't need that. You could just get this for your KitchenAid. Okay, so this is the KitchenAid one. This is the actual KitchenAid one. They have two kinds, stainless steel and plastic. Uh, both of them work well. I've tried out some of the cheap ones on Amazon. They're okay. I would definitely go with the stainless steel or buy the actual KitchenAid plastic one. It comes with more grinding accessories. Now, you absolutely can completely skip the grinding part and just buy a sausage stuffer. What are you talking about? How? You can just buy pre-ground meat or ask your butcher to grind it for you. Oh, so you could just use hamburger. You could use hamburger. Uh, it may not be the same quality. You aren't going to be able to determine the fat percentage as much. Okay. But you can use hamburger meat or ground pork, or you can go to a local butcher, tell them, hey, I want this beef, and can you then grind it up for me so I could make my sausage? Nice to know. Okay. So we are actually going to grind our own meat. But again, you don't need to do this part. Okay. Now, what else do you need? Like I said, you're going to need some kind of beef. So I've got some chuck roast here that I have already cut up into cubes. Or again, you can just use a few packages of ground beef. Then we need some spices. We're going to use garlic, onion, paprika, pepper, Redmond Real Salt. This is going to be an optional ingredient that's going to cause some controversy. Okay. And that is curing salt number one, which is a nitrate. Okay. Now, I don't have a problem with nitrites. Some people do. Dr. Barry's got a whole video. I'll leave a link for it up here about don't worry about it. You don't have to use the nitrites, but it does help preserve them a little bit. It helps with curing and it maintains that pink color, that red color you would see in a hot dog. If you don't use your nitrites, if you don't use curing salt number one, your hot dogs will be like a white slash gray look. Completely up to you. When we get to that stage, I'll tell you what to do if you use it and what to do if you don't use it. Good. Okay. Then after that, we need some kind of sausage casing. You have a couple of different options. So if you want a natural casing mm -hmm. where you the hot dog's in a casing, you eat the casing, you get a good snap, you want to get sheep casings. You can also use collagen or hog casings, but traditionally we would use sheep casings. Uh, you can, I'll leave a link for them on the internet. You can get them on Amazon. You can get them from sausage places. A lot of times you can get them from a local butcher. Uh, I will say those sheep casings are very delicate. So there's a little bit of a trial and error. 
You just have, once you learn how to do it though, it's not too bad. The other option is what's called cellulose casing. These will give you skinless hot dogs. So what you'll do is you'll stuff it inside of these and then once they cool, you have to peel off each hot dog. But that's like what a lot of the hot dogs we buy in the store are, right? right. They're, like they're skinless hot dogs, but some kind of a casing. And then finally, you're gonna need for this a kitchen scale and you need one that's precise to at least a gram or preferably less than a gram because when you get to the nitrites, you wanna make sure you're using the right amount. Right. You ready? Yeah. Okay, we're gonna put all this stuff away and then we're gonna get into grinding the meat. Now I do wanna say, this video is gonna take a couple days to make. So there is probably gonna be some change of outfits. <laughs> Just to let you know, because it's really best to let stuff sit. Uh, you wanna get the meat super cold and go from there. Ready? Yeah. Okay, so here we go. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna turn on the machine. And you're gonna just slowly start putting the pieces of meat into your hopper. And then we can just press this down. Okay, so we've run it through the first time. Now, what you can do here is check the temperature of the meat. And if it's still cold, you can run it through again. Or what you can do is put it back in the bag put it in the freezer for about 10, 15 minutes and get it super cold again and then run it through again. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna switch out our grinding plate to the next size down. So this is the biggest one, then we have this one, and then we have this one. Now you actually don't have to do the third time if you wanna use a food processor, which we're gonna do, uh, but we're gonna just show you just in case. The whole idea if you wanna make hot dogs is you wanna get it to the point where you can't even tell the difference between the fat and the beef. Okay. Wow, it's like thin spaghetti. So we got all our meat out. Now what we're gonna do is, we're gonna actually take this and get whatever meat is left inside because we're gonna run this through a food processor to emulsify the meat. When we're done for making a hot dog, you don't wanna be able to notice, see how like if you look in here, you can see the fat, you don't wanna see any of it. You want it to all be like one piece. We're gonna go ahead and put this into the freezer for a minute while we prepare our spices. It always scares me when you pull out those gloves. <laughs> I love that they're pink though, right? First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add in our spices. I'm not gonna bother telling you everything because it's based on the amount of meat I have here. There's a recipe linked down below and you can just figure it out based on that. Uh, that recipe tells you to use two pounds of beef. Obviously we have four here, so we've doubled it, but we've got some ground black pepper garlic powder, uh, granulated onion, paprika, and 40 grams of red men. Sounds like a lot of salt, but you need it. We're gonna go ahead and mix that all together. And again, we wanna get it really well incorporated. And then once you get some of the spices mixed together, we're gonna go ahead and add in our prog powder. Now with the prog powder, I'll hold it so it keeps not moving. Uh, with the prog powder, this is really important. It's based on weight. You don't wanna have too much, but you wanna make sure you have enough. That's why we're weighing everything out. I'll leave a link to a calculator that'll tell you exactly how much to use. Um, I've got 4.5 grams here. So we'll just go ahead and you can see it's, it's not a lot. There's not a lot of stuff here. Go ahead and give that a really good mix. It smells amazing. It smells just like hot dogs and it tastes just, just like, like hot, hot dogs. dogs. Okay, now that you've got that pretty well mixed, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and stick this back into the freezer for about 10 minutes. We could probably keep moving on, but just to be safe, we're gonna put it back in the freezer for about five or 10 minutes. And while we're doing that, we will set up the food processor for the next step. Okay, next step, we're going to begin emulsifying the meat. now. The easiest way to do this is with a food processor. Actually, the easiest way to do it is with a meat mixer, but that would be about $600. We don't have one of those. So we're gonna use a food processor. Now, if you don't have a food processor, you can do this by hand, or you could use your KitchenAid. It'll just take a little bit longer because what you're gonna do is you're gonna continue to mix this until it becomes basically um, Ugly. Goo. <laughs> goo is a, is a good word for it. But basically like one color, one texture. Like right now, if you look at this meat, 
you can see the protein and see the fat. We're gonna keep mixing it until it's all one. The protein's gonna start breaking down. It's gonna emulsify the fat into it. The reason it's better to use a food processor is it's faster and thus it's not going to cool down. So if you're doing it by hand, you're gonna have to stop constantly, put it back in the freezer because your hands are gonna warm up the meat and you absolutely don't wanna have that. It, it just won't result in a good thing. So I would say food processor number one, uh, KitchenAid number two by hand number three. And even with the KitchenAid, you're probably gonna have to stop at least once. One little tip, put everything in the freezer ahead of time or in the refrigerator. So like if you're gonna mix it in your KitchenAid bowl, put that bowl in the freezer, get everything nice and cold ahead of time. So because I've got a double mixture here, my food processor won't hold the whole thing. So we're gonna go ahead and divide it in half and we'll do a half a batch and then the other half a batch. So what we'll do is we'll just literally take a bunch of this. I'll take it here. We're gonna start with this. This will go into the freezer. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we are going to take our food processor and this is this is the, the not so fun part. It's kind of dirty and yeah. um, doesn't look pleasant. We're gonna go ahead and put this in here. And along with that, we're gonna put some ice, about uh, a half a cup to a cup of ice. He is not joking. You have to keep this cold. Keeping it cold is the key. Okay, we'll put the top on. Put your top on. Okay, so that's about 30 seconds. We're nowhere near done, but I do wanna show it to you of what's going on and you can see how it was so pretty a minute ago, Joe. It is it's getting like a, a pate type of uh, color and consistency. Uh, but again, you can still see the differences between the protein and the fat, so we wanna keep going. Uh, generally, you're gonna do this for about a minute or two uh, for each half. If you're doing just like a two pound mixture, um, then you're pro it's gonna be about three minutes or so, again, depending on your food processor and everything else. There's what it looks like now. Uh, now it actually does need a little bit more mixing, but what we wanna do is put this into the bowl, put that in the refrigerator and get the other ones so that we can do one final mix with everything together. Now, Rachel was asking me before when we had this on, why am I doing this as a four pound instead of a two pound? Uh, a couple reasons, number one, uh, the package of meat that we bought, like was four pounds. Happened to be four pounds. Uh, also, uh, a lot of times when you're gonna pull out your sausage stuffer and your grinder, you don't wanna do this every couple days. Right. So a lot of people who do sausage making, it's like they do it once a month and it's like an all day deal. It's the perfect meal prepping because once you make a, you know, a whole big batch of this, then you won't have to do it for a while. Yeah, like I made some bratwurst I did six pounds of pork for bratwurst. It took about three hours, but I've got like 30, 40 links of bratwurst. And so I make that and then you can vacuum seal them up. So generally when you do it, because you're gonna pull out the equipment and everything else, you wanna do larger batches. Okay, let's go ahead and check that out. Mm, there you go, delicious. baby. Delicious. We're gonna go ahead and grab the other batch and just give it one mix all together. And that's probably good enough right there. Yep, that looks good. Now I do wanna say, you're gonna just be prepared. You're gonna get dirty. Your hands are gonna get dirty. You're gonna be washing them a lot. Um, even if you're wearing gloves. I mean, I, I've just gotten to a point where it's, for something like this, there's no point because I'm just gonna have to keep taking to the, the gloves, gloves off. The, it becomes very difficult to work with gloves when I get to this point. When you're doing the mixing, I'm fine with it. Usually because at least the gloves will kind of insulate our hand a little bit. Uh, it's not so much about anything other than that. It's about keeping my hands warm. So yeah. now that the meat is all in this bowl, what do you think the next step is? The very next step is wash your hands because yes. you don't want to be touching everything with this disgusting yeah. hands. You don't want to pick this up and then go grab the freezer door and everything no. else. After that, 
grab the freezer door and put this back into the freezer to stay cool. Yeah, so in a freezer. Now I do wanna say, if you don't have enough room in your freezer, you can do this in the refrigerator. You just may have to leave it in there a little bit longer. Put it towards the back where it's gonna be nice and cold. But again, the idea is keep it cold while you're waiting on the next step. So we're gonna go ahead, Rachel's gonna put that in the freezer. I'm gonna wash my hands. We're gonna start cleaning up these bowls and then we'll come back with the next step. Is there room for me in the shot? Uh, let's go ahead and move this over. Okay. Okay. So we're Hello. gonna go ahead and stuff our sausage. So the first thing we're gonna do is prepare our sausage stuffer. Now remember, you can do this with the KitchenAid. You don't oh, yeah. need a sausage stuffer. This just makes it easier. It makes it easier. It allows you to do a lot more. So if you look at the KitchenAid, you've got to keep pushing it down in the tube. Whereas this one, we can take all of our meat, put it in here. It's one little thing. Let so gravity do the work. How much is your time worth? You know, and how much are you making? Yeah, if you're only gonna do this like once in an absolute boom, blue moon and do like maybe one to two pounds of sausage, you may not wanna want to do one of these. This one will do up to seven pounds of sausage. If you are gonna make it once in a while, I would invest in one. I'll leave a link for a couple of them down below. You can get them for as cheap as 50 or 60 bucks. I think this one was like $100. Uh, overall, I actually really like this one. I did a Google like best home sausage stuffer. Dr. And Google. This one is not like a top of the line. It's like a, a knockoff from China, but it does a really, really, really good job. And it's half the price of like the one I guess that they're trying to imitate. It's a Hakka food processing. So we're gonna go ahead, we're using the smaller tube because we're making hot dogs. And we're gonna make two different kinds. We're gonna do some in a sheepskin casing, which is considered natural casings. Those are gonna give you the biggest snap. Okay. When you think about a hot dog snap. Then we're gonna make skinless hot dogs. And that's what most people are used to. I find it's easiest. Uh, now, with those, we're using what looks like plastic, but these are actually cellulose casings. Uh, it's made from like wood fiber. How cool. So uh, these are smoke permeable ones because you can put them in a smoker and it'll get some of that smoke flavor without getting a lot of it. Uh, but we're gonna make two different kinds to show you the difference, okay? So we will start off with our sheep casings and this is what they look like. So what That's you do is- That's super appetizing. You get them, they're all like covered in salt and then you're gonna soak them for at least 30 minutes. These have actually been soaking overnight because I made some yesterday. And then what I do is I actually open it up and I run water through it and it makes it a little bit easier to work with. Now the key to putting these on, I'm gonna actually let you do it once I get it on, is make sure the horn, this is called the horn. The horn. Make sure it's nice and wet. You wanna keep that really, really wet. Okay. So we're gonna go- What's your horn? Find the end of the sheep casing. Okay. Which is basically just intestine. All right, but I'm not gonna think about that right now. And we're gonna put- It's a garden hose as far uh, as I'm concerned. We're gonna go ahead and put this on here. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and wet the horn and all you're gonna do is you're gonna grab it and just keep like, oh. you don't have to be super gentle. Oh, okay, yeah, all right, yeah. Okay. okay. And we're just going to put the whole thing on. Loading this thing up is super easy. We're gonna move it over just so that people can see it in the picture. So, because you can keep reloading it. You raise the, the top up and now it just comes down on an angle. Now, before you do that, I was gonna give you gloves so that you can just take that oh, off. <laughs> thank you. Okay. Oh, that helps. And you can go ahead and just put it all in. And this will honestly hold it all if you want. Okay, you ready? Yeah. So again, can be done with one person, especially with this particular machine. Uh, easier with two people because one person can feed the sausage, the other person can crank it. It's about getting into the right rhythm. So you find like one click and then let it keep going. And if you get a nice even thing, it'll work out really well. So what we're gonna do right now is we are going to uh, try to get the meat to start coming out the uh, end of the horn. Okay, so now what we'll do is we'll just tie a knot here. So now again, we want this to be nice and wet because that's gonna allow the casing to come off. And we wanna put a little bit of tension on the casing 
but not too much. Sheep casing is probably one of the most delicate ones. It really is. So we're gonna just start going, and again, just keep going at a regular pace. Okay, there we go. And see how we're gonna let, you're gonna keep going, don't stop. You don't stop, and I'll just, and we're gonna let this kind of feed. So I'm using my fingers to just kind of like put a touch of tension on it. And if, if you can do it at the same pace, it'll just keep going. Slow it down a little bit. You're going a little bit too fast. Keep the same pace you were doing before. We're at the end there. So somehow we doubled up the casing. <laughs> See how there's like a double casing? Yeah. There? So we're just gonna leave it because video. Now what we wanna do is actually go ahead and make our link. So what we do is, I am not super great at this. I mean, if you watch some people, especially you watch like professional butchers, they can just move along and they twist and, right. you know. So watch the splash zone. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of use this about a judgment, like how big do I want my hot dog? And so I'm gonna pinch lightly and then I'm gonna come down and pinch again, okay? And then once you give it a pinch, but you wanna kind of do this slowly, Okay, especially with the sheep casing, because what's going to happen is it's going to rupture if you do it too much. Then I'm going to twist it towards me like three or four times. Okay. Now, again, if you watch like experts, they can just kind of like fling it. I'm not that good. Please don't. So then what we do is we come down again, same length. I pinch it. And then I come down the same length again. And I pinch it. And... I twist it, okay? Watch that little end there and it's like flipping juice around. Now, yeah, so this one is a little bit skinnier because it's the first one. But so right there, we have- How fun! Two, four, six hot dogs. I like it. Okay, one and one with a double casing. <laughs> okay, let's go ahead and do you want to make a set with these? Yes, because look, you're, you you got to see how easy this stuff is to use. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to tie a knot with a piece of rope here to just end this first one. You could just tie it, you know, in the cellulose, but it's just easier this way. Now, same thing. It's nice, that's a, that's a little too much. There you go. So, and again, we're just feeding it along. So you're putting a little bit of resistance so it fills up. Okay, stop. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and tie a knot here. Now, I watched a video on how to do this and this was kind of cool the way they do this. So a lot of the forms tell you to actually use rope and just tie them off. But the way they did this is we pinch, right? Mm -hmm. And then come down and find your length like this. So we pinch and twist. So twist it like just around. Right. Then we come down here and we pinch again and we twist. And then you use this one to kind of wrap it around. Oh, nice. Okay. Then you come down like this and you pinch and twist it and then feed it through this and what you would do is do a double you would end up with four of them okay but we did a little short one so we're gonna make more of these because rachel likes i skinless. really like the skinless let's show you what we've got and explain what the next step is first of all with that sausage stuffer you do have some sausage that is left over uh because there's nothing to push it out once the thing gets flat you will have the same thing with the kitchen aid there's going to be stuff inside of the chute that you just can't get out. A couple of things that you can do. You can uh, put bread in there mm -hmm. or rice and that would push it out and many people would eat that bread or rice or they even use potato, things like that. Obviously we don't, which means you may get one extra sausage and then you're not gonna be able to eat the last one. You could feed it to your animals if you want. Of course. Uh, or what we do is we just take it and make like little patties. So we've got two 
hot dog hamburger patties. It's gonna weird you out because it's gonna have all of the flavor of hot dog, only it's in a different consistency. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna stick this in the air fryer in a second, it's warming up right now. So because we put prog powder in here, we wanna let these sit overnight because we're going to basically allow these to smoke at a lower temperature. So the prog powder is a preservative. It's a cure that allows you to not get botulism. We don't want that. Okay, so we're gonna let it do its thing. There are ways to speed it up. If you aren't using it and you don't need to, it doesn't affect the taste at all, you can cook them right away. But we're gonna let these go ahead and sit overnight and we have another batch uh, that we're gonna get right now. So this is a batch that I made last night. And so you'll see what, see what we have here. We have two, four, six, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. And then we have a bunch in the sheep casing. So what do we have? We had 15. Look at the size of this one. <laughs> that guy is huge. 15, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26. So again, you got about the same amount, uh, less of these because I've got more of these. I just did like a double batch. But the one thing that you do notice is you get some inconsistencies with the sheep casing because they're different width. I wanted to show you, so when you get it, this is how they're gonna come. And this is just a big thing of this. And this is the same company. So this is their little one. This is their big one. I got these off of Amazon. This is what they come like. Oh my gracious. Okay. Christmas and light tangle. So they are, well, there's generally a knot in here. And then this is all covered in salt. Okay. Okay. And then what you do is you pull off two or three strands. You're going to soak them in water, get all that salt off, rinse them out a couple times. And then I like to run water through the middle. People say you don't need to. I actually like it because it stretches it out a little bit. Doing it that way, see what these though, see this is 20 to 30 millimeters. So some of them are gonna be thin, some of them are gonna be thick. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and cook these so that you can just have them like a regular hot dog. So we're gonna put some of them into a smoker and then we're also gonna do some parboiling. Um, I haven't had a lot of luck with it, but I think I've learned how to do it. That, the idea behind this is do not overcook them. Okay. If you overcook them, they're gonna be nasty. They're gonna shrivel up like a hot dog that you've put on the grill that's overcooked. The idea here is get to an internal temperature of about 150 to 160 degrees and then stop it right away. So the best way to actually prepare these hot dogs is by putting them in a smoker if you have one. If you don't have a smoker, that's okay. You can parboil them, you can cook them in the oven or you can cook them in a sous vide. And inside of the recipe card that's linked down below is gonna be directions for each method. Now, if you're using a smoker, the best smoker is gonna be an electric smoker because you can have a really low temperature. Uh, but if you only have a pellet smoker, that's fine. You're just gonna have to monitor the temperature uh, of the hot dogs a little bit closer because most pellet smokers don't go below about 150 to 160 degrees. I just have all of the hot dogs hanging from the top rack and rather than buying the like fancy, like actual hot dog rod, what I did was I just ordered these little stainless steel S hooks. I bought them on Amazon. I'll leave a link for them down below. And I just have all the hot dogs hanging so they're not touching that way. They all cook evenly. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna smoke them at a hundred degrees for about an hour. That's going to allow the smoke flavor to really get into the hot dogs. Then I'm not gonna add any more wood chips. I'm gonna bump the temperature up to 140 degrees cook them there for an hour, and then I'm gonna bump the temperature up to 160 degrees, and we're gonna cook them for probably about another 35, 40 minutes until we get an internal temperature of 150 to 155 degrees. After that, we're gonna go ahead and put them right into an ice bath. That stops the cooking process. Okay, so the hot dogs are done, and uh, we've got three different preparation methods. So we stuffed everything into the casings, we let it sit overnight, and then you basically have three different ways you're going to cook them so that you can then store them. The first way, the way that I like and the way Rachel likes is in a smoker. Yeah. So this is the smoker. This is the one that comes in the cellulose casing, skinless. And this is the sheepskin. This over here is cooked in a sous vide. 
So all of these were cooked to an internal temperature of 100 to 100, 150 to 155 degrees. Right. So I did want to show you these actually just came out how easy it is to get them out of the plastic casing. I'm actually going to have you do it. All you need to do is literally squeeze from the top and it'll come right out. Boom. Just okay. like that. And then you can do the same thing on the other one, except for we have a knot here. So, but if you have them just twisted, you would literally just do that. Now, one thing you will notice is there's like a little bit of fat on here. A lot of people just rinse that down. It actually means we overcooked it just slightly. So you can see there's a difference in the color. Yeah, the because color. Because these are boiled, these aren't. The color is more appealing to me. Does it, does it change the taste? No. no. It just changes what it looks like. Well, these have a slightly different taste because they're smoked, but the overall flavor profile of the hot dog is very similar. Right. Okay, so that's the sous vide method. And then this is the parboiling. To me, the parboiling method is the most difficult- To get perfect. To get right. Yeah. Because what you're gonna find is it's very easy to overdo it. It's very easy to overshoot the temperature. And you can see that, I mean, these literally just came out of the water, but they're very similar. Um, these are the sous vide ones. So the sous vide ones actually have a little bit more of a red color. And then again, here is the skinless ver the skin version. The skin version, you'll notice they're odd shape. Yeah. That is just comes from the more you stuff sausages, the better the shape, the more uniform your shape is gonna be. So that is the three different ways. Personally, if you have a smoker, go with the smoker. You want to get it low as you know when it comes to temperature. Another reason why if you don't have a smoker and you want to have us use a sous vide, you can have more control over the temperature than yeah. you can if you're doing the parboiling method. Yeah, if you go, if you have a sous vide and you don't have a smoker, sous, always sous vide over parboiling because again, you can't overshoot the temperature. You're right. gonna set it to your temperature and that's where you're gonna go. So are you ready to go ahead and try these? Of course. We have these, now th what we've done is we took the ones that were already cooked, okay? Because they're edible at this point. Yeah. But then you wanna heat them up like you would norm a normal hot dog. So Rachel likes them in the air fryer. I do. She likes them to get crispy. So this is the sheepskin version. This is the skinless version. Which one are we going with first? Um, Let's start with this one. Okay. First we wanna listen for the snap. Ooh. Nice. Very nice. You're definitely gonna get I'm gonna more try of that a snap. With the microphone. Okay. Okay. Try not to wear it. Yeah. Oh, you totally just shot moisture. Hopefully you heard that. Okay. Let me grab a paper towel over here. I could use one also. Thank you. That's a grease. There you go. Gonna dink it. Dink. Dink. Mmm. Mm. Fantastic snap. Wow. Mm-hmm. Wow. Wow. It's amazing how quickly I forget that this is a sheep intestine. Mm -hmm. Very quickly. This is just a hot dog now. I'm no longer feeling weird about it being inside of an intestine. So here is the regular skinless hot dog that we're all used to. Dink. Mmm. And that's a hot dog. Delicious. I like to call this the Labrador retriever of this process. <laughs> Tabitha makes us look like rock star dog trainers because she's a Labrador and she's just, you know, awesome. They're mm -hmm. just an easy dog to raise, right? So this type of casing, I think is gonna make you feel like a rock star to get started because yes. Your zero to more of a uniform look, it, it's a faster track to yeah. get to that. Now, there are some drawbacks to using the cellulose, and that is if you get air in there, you're not getting it out. Right. So, although it's easier to not have a blowout, it is not as easy to get it right because if you get air into the system, 
you can't really get it out. You can try using a little sausage pricker and getting it out and that will help a little bit, but it's basically once it's in there, it's very, very difficult to get it out. You of also it. have to peel them all. Um, also, I mean, again, it, this comes down to the size of the casing. These were 19 millimeter. I like them a little bit thicker, but it really comes down to what do you like? We actually just got a shipment of a little bit wider ones to try on the next round. Um, but uh, overall, the flavor is dead on. Yes. Now it just comes down to, Your do you prefer natural casing or do you prefer skinless? Also, the, the skinless ones are straight. They remind you of like a Nathan's hot dog. Yes. If you are making them for somebody who is a picky eater or is like needs it to be visually stimulating, I feel like they're gonna like looking at the ones that are made with the cellulose. Yeah, so. Well, that is it. That is how you make your own hot dogs. Again, link for the recipe is gonna be down below in the description. Uh, this was a lot of fun. I will say this, I don't think we will ever buy store-bought hot dogs unless we're on the road. Yeah, because it's just so easy to make once you get the hang of it. The flavor is amazing. And just knowing that there's not a bunch of wonky ingredients yeah. and that I can utilize even, you know, the cheapest cuts of meat make me feel really good about yeah, it. Yeah, go to the store, buy $3 a pound ground beef and stuff all your own. Yeah. Make it a fun day. Make it, you know, on a Saturday. Grab the kids, grab the, you know, your significant other and just say, you know what, today we're going to make we a make whole bunch hot of hot dogs. dogs. Yeah. You know, like grind up 10 pounds of ground beef and just start going with it. I've also even since we started making this video learn, you can actually avoid the food processor thing completely if you have a really good meat grinder, like a, a really professional meat grinder, yeah. which you can get for like 100, 150 bucks. Um, you know, especially if you go on an offer up or something like that, where you just keep running it through a few times. So run it through, make it cold, run it through, make it cold. And every time you run it through, you're gonna be emulsifying the meat and that would actually make it so that you don't ever have to pull out the food processor. Which is nice. But overall, it's a lot of fun. It saves you a lot of money and you know what is in your hot dog. Exactly. Now, if you like seeing videos like this, take a look at some of the videos we have linked right over here. Also, make sure you take a look at our most recent videos I'm gonna put right over there. Well, whether you head this way or you head this way, don't forget to head this way. Subscribe to our channel and click the little bell icon and that way every single time we make something new, you'll be alerted to it. Till next time. Bye. Bye.